good Sunday morning and welcome into the Sports Source. That is the last time you will ever see that open. Uh, no, we're not on our new set. As a matter of fact, we've run Gene Patterson and his crew off their set. As we continue to light our new one, we'll be launching that. We'll tell you a little bit more about this later in the show, but we'll be launching and debuting our new set on Wednesday night uh, between 8 and 9 on WATE's big tailgate, Tennessee tailgate preseason special. Should be good. It is ready, and uh, I want to give full credit to the folks at Benedict Construction for doing a tremendous amount of work. How many times have you ever heard of a contractor that came in on time? It's rare. So they had it ready, but as a perfectionist, I wanted to spend more time lighting it. We've got to run through some camera angles. Chuck wouldn't even know which camera to turn and mug to <laughs> if, we didn't, if we didn't have it there. So we are instead doing today's show on the Tennessee This Week set and uh, appreciate WATE for allowing us to be over here. We've got a big group of people today. Let's go ahead and get started. First segment brought to you by our good friends at Phil Cobble Fine Homes and Land. In East Tennessee, nobody does a better job of connecting house hunters with their future homes than Phil and his team. Just take a look at this incredible lakefront paradise. We show a lot of beautiful homes. This one might be my new favorite. Uh, two acres on Melton Hill Lake, five bedrooms, custom built home, wooded lot, quarter mile private drive, paved, and look at the view from that boat dock. Just tremendous. Whatever kind of home you're in the market for, Phil Cobble Fine Homes and Land can help you find it. They can also help you move your home. Heck, your home may appear next week on the Sports Source Showcase. Phil Cobble Fine Homes and Land, you're gonna see his phone number kind of on the screen next to him. Let's go to a wide shot, show that off. There you go, look at that. Now, doesn't this look good? I feel like we, <laughs> I, I, I feel like I should ask these guys now. Daycares in neighborhoods, uh, uh, you know, sewage treatment plants. And it's, it's a little more like a, uh, a political show. So, uh, guys, for it, against it, for it, against it. Very good. I'm against it. Glad to have you guys here. We have, of course, Bob Hodge, who is a freelance contributor to the Knoxville News Sentinel. Appreciate you being with us. Uh, we have David Ligon, former Vol offensive lineman, uh, who joins us, and you'll be part of our football coverage this fall, as will Bobby Scott, former Vol quarterback. Always appreciate you joining us, Bobby. Always great to be here. And Chuck Cavalier is sitting right down there. Chuck, thanks for being with us. Great to be here. All right. Um, <laughs> and Chuck, of course, with Tennessee Golf Central, and also you've covered the Vols and TV, radio, newspaper for what, 30 years now? Uh, 30 at least plus? 29. 29 years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. I was close. All right. I want to start today. Uh, with a couple of comments from Butch Jones. One was used uh, by our buddy Mike Strange in a column that I think appeared today in the Sentinel, and then a couple of others came from a, a, a talk he gave at the Rotary Club. And uh, let's just go ahead and, and show folks what was said this uh, recently by Butch Jones. Uh, they're gonna have to make an impact in the first game. Right now there's a possibility all of them, that's the newcomers, could play. All 32 of the newcomers could play this year. He also said, it takes time. We put these kids on pedestals and they're 17 year old kids working to be young adults. They've never played a snap of college football. Okay, so he's, he's laid down the, 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 the preparations and he follows it up by saying, when we go to a bowl game this year. <laughs> All right, so my question, fellas, we've talked a lot about the youth on this team. How do you reconcile the first points with the last point? You're talking about how young you are, how you can't put them on pedestals, how they're all gonna have to contribute. But when we go to a bowl game, is that just coach speak to try and pump up fans and players, or what do you, how do you reconcile those two? So I'm going to go with a little bit of coach speak. And also, people who have been over there, they've seen these guys, people have seen them in scrimmages, they've done all these things. This is a better group of athletes than you had. So a little bit of coach speak, but I think also you've got the kind of athletes that Tennessee fans were used to seeing. Will they wear out in November? Who knows? But so a little bit of coach speak, but a little bit of anticipation that, yes, we've got better athletes on campus now than we've had. Yes? Well, I think you're just trying to temper expectations a little bit. You, you know down the road it's going to be better. But right now, hey, we're, if you have to pay uh, 32 of these guys, yeah. you've got a problem, I think, in your first year. But then when we do go to a bowl, uh, I, I like hearing that, but there's a lot of things that have to fall into place before that happens. Yeah, David, you played over there recently. Uh, your thoughts on uh, that much youth on one team and trying to put the bowl as the goal. Obviously, that's the goal. Is it a realistic goal uh, when you look at all those young bodies? Well, I mean, I, I think it, there's two sides with him saying, you know, we've got all these young guys we're going to play. I mean, I, I think at one point, you know, he's saying we're excited about their athletic ability. The second comment of saying, look, you know, we may be excited about their athletic ability, but they're still very young. They're going to make mistakes, so don't get down on them if they go out and 
first couple of plays there's a mistake. You know, we, we got to work with them to get that mentality that they're going to put that behind them and continue to work get, to, to get better. But, um, you know, the, the bowl game, I mean, it's got to be the goal. Is it realistic? Um, yeah, I think it's realistic. Um, you know, is, is it probable is maybe the, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> is, okay. is, is, is the true question. But, um, you know, and may, some of that may have been, you know, pandering to the crowd at the Rotary Club. Sure, sure. Bobby, um, when you came in, freshmen didn't play. Um, right. So you never went through it where you saw guys right out of high school go straight onto the field against big time opponents. No. Um, your thoughts on are Butch Jones, which, which of those statements from Butch Jones do you lean more on? We're young and you gotta be, gotta be uh, patient or bowl game this year? I kinda, you know, I agree with what everybody said. You know, it's uh, being, being young, that's really not good. Being young and talented, that steps it up a little level. And, uh, you know, I think, I think the goal always should be, you know, making a bowl game. Uh, uh, and then after that, you want to, you know, you want to make the SEC championship. Uh, you know, you just you kind of build on it. And I think, uh, you know, I think I think Butch is, uh, uh, you know, I think he's he's the man for the job. And I like the way he's talking and uh, and everything. I don't I don't have any problem at all with what he said. And I think he tried to put it in perspective too by saying, think back to high school. Think back what it would have been like to have a freshman competing with seniors in high right. school. And now look how much more advanced that is with teams, with players from other teams that have been in weight rooms and in programs for three or four years. And then last year when, jo you know, when Dobbs came in and, and, uh, and played those five games and everything, you know, everybody said, oh, he can't throw the ball. He can't throw the, the deep ball. He can't do this. Uh, you know, heck, he was just out of, out of high school yeah. about six months. And uh, you know, and and hadn't even been on campus hardly. So, but you and I, well, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think a bowl game is a realistic goal. Most people think this team's going to be five and seven. Right. So you're talking one game Jesus. better yeah. than what a lot of people are predicting for him. You just got to get to six. Yeah. So it's not like he said, you know, when we're down in Louisiana and we're celebrating, right. getting ready to play in the Sugar Bowl. Yeah. So I, I think it <laughs> is a realistic goal to say a bowl. Because how many are there? Thirty-two bowls. More than that. Thirty-nine. Yeah, it's almost so, forty. So, at this point. getting to six wins, I think, for this team, is a realistic goal. One thing you and I have talked about, and we keep saying that it's young, but it's young talent. Um, other schools, and you'll hear this this fall. Other schools put their young guys out there, but what you're talking about these other schools, they're not having to put thirty-two at once. Right. Alabama plays some young guys. LSU plays a lot of young guys. They've had so many guys go pro the last couple of years they may even take a little step back this year because they don't have as much depth. They're, they're, they're very young. But when you look at an Alabama using young players, yeah, but you're putting them out there next to three guys who are all American over here. That's a little different than what we're talking about at Tennessee, where you're going to have brand new guys on the offensive line and the defensive line and scattered throughout the You You field. look at teams that are that good and they sprinkle their young guys in. If you play all 32 of these guys, then at any given time, what are you going to have? Six or seven of them on the field at one time? Yeah, possibly. It, if you play that's all, that's what I'm saying. If you play all 32, I think you've got, you've got some problems. Yeah. But and we I, know they've got some. Yeah. Problems. yeah. <laughs> I mean, but the thing is, the thing is, though, you play all those guys this year, and people don't want to hear it. But you play those guys this year, and you struggle. I, I think that's going to help you next yes. year because you're, all these guys are going to have a little bit more experience. I mean, it's not like a guy just took a red shirt year. They're going to know what it's like to get punched in the mouth in an SEC game. So I think that's a benefit. David, you had something we, to close on? Yeah, I mean, I was going to think, you know, how many, he, he just said we're going to play him. I mean, he didn't say we're going to you know, put him out there in real prominent producing roles. I mean, there's going to be some of those guys that are. Yes. And those are going to be the ones that, if there's a mistake, could potentially impact the course of a game. But for the most part, I, I think a lot of them, if they play that number, they're going to be, uh, you know, later in a game. They're, they're you Special know, teams. Special teams, absolutely. Which, which isn't a bad thing. I mean, you want get, to get guys out there, get snaps, get experience. Bobby. And those guys that – you know, you also want to hope that they know what it feels like to punch somebody in the mouth. <laughs> Good, point. Good point. All right. Uh, when we come back, I want to talk more. You know, last week we had uh, nine former balls on the show. Uh, in the next segment, I'm going to have a couple of former balls talk specifically about the offensive line. That's David Ligon and our old friend Mike Stoll joins us. Come on back as we uh, take over the Tennessee this week said Gene Patterson is uh, gargling right now. He's warming up the pipes. He's getting ready to come out here at the top of the hour. Uh, until then, it is our set, and we thank WHE for loaning it to us. Come on back on the Sports Source. <laughs>